Hey, I wanted to make a quick comparison video showing a straight bullback 9mm versus a delayed bullback 9mm. So this topic comes up a lot and uh, the big the big thing that uh, most people say uh, are the pros of a delayed blowback setup is the recoil impulse. And uh, usually that brings on comments of like, what kind of a sissy are you that you can't shoot a 9mm rifle? Uh, that's not the issue. It's not like physical pain in your shoulder like shooting a you know, 458 wind mag or something like that. It's how the recoil impulse uh, moves the gun around. So um, what happens in a straight blowback 9mm, uh, most of the recoil is not caused by the cartridge itself. It's uh, caused by the reciprocating bolt mass. So you have this heavy buffer tube and this heavy bolt moving back and forth inside the receiver here. And when all of this weight comes to an abrupt stop at the back of the receiver, it kind of like jolts the gun backwards and tips up. And then as it reverses and comes to an abrupt stop at the front of the receiver, it does the opposite and tips you down. So if you shoot a direct blowback nine millimeter with a really low bolt mass, like an AR-9 or a sub 2000, the gun just like jumps around in your hands a lot. And it's it's hard to keep your tar your sights on the target while you're shooting during that during that recoil. So that's, that's where a uh, delayed blowback system comes in. So the, I have this AR9 set up. Uh, this is a registered SBR and it has a registered Form 1 suppressor on it. Um, and I have both a straight blowback bolt and buffer set up and this uh, shield manufacturing uh, roller delayed buffer set up. So the way that this, uh, the roller delayed setup here works, this buffer has uh, spring-loaded rollers in it that index in these detents machined in the buffer tube. And that just create, creates a little bit of mechanical advantage that has to be overcome in order to push the bolt backwards. So just for that like first quarter of an inch of bolt travel, there's a little bit of resistance caused by the mechanical advantage of that roller. So it's like a, it's a lot like uh, an MP5. Um, so our two bolts here, these are uh, basically the same bolt except the direct blowback bolt has an additional steel weight pressed into the back of the bolt here to provide some additional mass. Um, with the delayed blowback, we do not need that weight, so we can take it out. And then uh, our buffer setup here for the uh, direct blowback, we have a solid steel buffer um, with an extra power carbine spring and then this bolt snubber at the back here. Um, so, and then with the spring, the buffer spring setup for the the delayed blowback setup. The shield manufacturing uh, system comes with this like really, really super light recoil spring. And uh, that works fine. And uh, I didn't have any issues with it as long as you kept the gun clean. But uh, I found that when I would get the gun really, really filthy, that I would start having some problems going into battery. Uh, probably mainly due because this is a Colt mag lower. So it's, it uses like Uzi style mags. And these mags just take a lot of force to push the round out. So I would get some problems where the bolt would stop uh, before it would get the uh, round all the way out of the magazine, especially when it was really filthy. So I took a uh, carbine buffer spring and I just cut coils off of it. I think I cut like eight or 10 coils off of it until I got the right amount of resistance and length and uh, that solved any of my reliability issues. So this runs really good. Um, so I'll, I'll pop this in here. So first I'm gonna shoot the seal system. So I'm gonna pop our spring in and then pop our buffer in. And I also wanna note, I, I was concerned when I bought this uh, shield roller delay setup that it was gonna be really finicky because it comes with a bunch of springs to tune it. And I thought, you know, I'm gonna have to play around with every different load and find the spring setup that will make it run reliably. And I just kind of dreaded that. Um, but I have not found that to be the case at all. Um, can run anything from, you know, plus P defensive loads all the way to like super, super light, like 800 feet per second hand loads that won't cycle a Glock and I have never had to change the spring setup. I actually have the heaviest springs in the roller mechanism that come in the kit, and I run every type of ammo with that without an issue. Um, so no problems there. I've been really impressed with the system. So I've just got these two mags with um, two rounds each of 147 grain HST, and uh, I picked this bullet because it 
uh, it's it's really hot uh, ammo and it really accentuates the difference between these two. If you load like really super light hand loads, it, it isn't that much of a difference, but with higher power ammo, it really makes a big difference. So I'm just gonna be shooting into the dirt like 30 feet in front of the bench here and then there's a big dirt backstop uh, in the distance here. So I'm gonna try as much as I can to just let this free recoil and just kind of milk the trigger here. open take out our bolt now I'm gonna put in the heavier bolt that has the weight in the back of it we'll pop out our uh, roller buffer and the spring this is a side charging upper and I took the handle off just to make it easier for the video so that's why I'm cocking it with a screwdriver All right, no. So this is our direct blowback. Okay. All right. So hopefully that gives you a good idea of the difference. Um, if you can't tell, uh, phones don't uh, cover, don't catch the sound of suppressors very well. But um, just suggestive or uh, subjectively, I would say with the with the straight blowback uh, bolt in it, it's like, I would say almost two times as loud to, the, to my ear compared to with the roller. So, um, yep, all right, thanks.